All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about something that I really enjoy talking about, and it's probably something that you haven't heard, and it's what a lot of people miss out on when explaining the concept of you know, using your thoughts to create an action, to create a behavior, which is your habits, uh, which triggers um, your emotional feeling, um, and then you know helps you achieve what you desire or acquire that thing or that item um, that you are looking for. Um, we hear it in the law of attraction, and I feel like this message is kind of that missing scientific component that really stops a lot of people from truly blindly 100% believing in uh, the law of attraction or manifestation because they don't quite understand what's going on with the body. So that's what we're going to talk about today, and it's called the heart brain. That's right. Your heart has a little brain in it. And what I mean by that is in 1991, a man by the name of Dr. J. Andrew Armour uh, discovered that the heart's complex nervous system actually acts independently of your brain, right? And you can see that making sense when, let's say, you're walking down a trail um, in the mountains and you turn the corner and there's a giant grizzly bear sitting there. What's reacting first? Is it your brain or is it your heart? It's your heart because that's what controls your autonomic nervous system known as your ANS. And I'll dive into that just in a little bit here so you better understand that. But when you turn that corner and you see a giant grizzly bear, you are shocked with fear and immediate. That's a feeling. That's your heart. That's your complex nervous system associating that bear with fear or, or fight or flight, whatever it is that you feel in that moment. Um, and your brain's not immediately going, oh, analyze bear, it's weighs this much, right? So it acts independently, um, which is pretty incredible. And so he coined in 1991 the term heart brain, or what we refer to as like a little brain. It's not a specific brain that is just sitting in the heart that looks and, you know, acts like your brain. It's the complex nervous system that acts basically um, as a little brain because it acts independently. Um, and so... Why is that important? Well, basically, it has 40,000 of its own neurons in it. And actually, what you see is there are two channels that go from the brain to the heart. And the heart actually sends more signals to the brain than the brain sends down to the heart, which is very fascinating, is a little bit of a paradigm shift than what probably most of us were taught in our biology class. Um, and so what, what does this mean? So when it comes to manifestation, you're constantly told, right down your affirmations, think about them, say them out loud, you know, think about what you want to manifest. And what we miss is this heart coherence. Okay, we need heart coherence. And so what I mean by that, I mean that you can literally sit there and you can write in your journal and you can manifest and you can talk to the mirror and you can do all those great things and, and say, you know, I'm rich, I'm happy, I feel love until you are literally blue in the face. But if you can't associate that thought with the feeling as if that has already occurred, then that thought, that affirmation is never going to make it past your brainstem. It's never going to be coherent throughout the body because you have your mind and you have your body. And that's what a habit is, right? A habit is a automatic, unconscious thought, behavior, and emotion that happens through repetition. A habit is when you've done something so many times that your body knows how to do it better than your mind. And so if you're sitting there saying with all your might and will, you want these things to happen. If your body doesn't feel it, then it can't happen. And you have to be in coherence with your heart and your brain have to be coherent. Okay. So what we have to learn to do is we have to learn to feel as if that emotion that we want. For me, I have on my wall here, a vision board of owning a jet ski. And in my manifestation and meditation, I don't just think about uh, owning a Jesse. I can feel it. I literally can feel the sun on my hand and arms. I can feel the ocean water hitting me in the face. And literally almost every time I think about it in meditation, I let out a loud, woo, as if I'm on the jet ski. I feel as though I am on this jet ski and I own the jet ski. And then after my meditation, when I'm done and I'm walking around, I feel like I have a, a, a jet ski. My thoughts of my future become more real than my past of my lack not having it. And sometimes I've even been like, 
to my girlfriend Natasha, hey, should we go on the jet ski today? I'm like, oh my gosh, I literally, that's just what I create through thought alone. But I walk around and act as though I have a jet ski. And that's the point that I'm trying to make. You have to feel as though you are rich. You have to feel as though you are loved. You have to feel like you are happy. And if you're thinking those thoughts, but you feel the opposite, then there's no coherence there and it won't manifest what you're looking for. So how does this work? So your ANS is your autonomic nervous system. This splits up into two. So you have your sympathetic nervous system and you have your parasympathetic nervous system. And this is associated with fight or flight, okay? And this is associated with rest and repair. Sorry for my handwriting. Uh, growth, uh, digestion, okay? Your immune system function, probably one of the most important things, okay? And you can only be in one or the other. Most of us are over here in our sympathetic nervous system. That is our fight or flight. That is our stress response, right? We're constantly stressed about social media. What's on there? What is going on with our job? Does our friend like us? What's going on around the world? Climate change, policy makers are corrupt. What's the new currency, crypto? What do I invest in, right? We're literally in a level of permanent stress. And no organism can live in permanent stress. It's a scientific fact. It downregulates genes and creates disease. It's a long-term effect. So we really have to focus on being a parasympathetic. And how I remember this is para is like grabbing a pair of pajamas. So that's how you can always remember it. Okay, parasympathetic, grab a pair of pajamas and relax. Take some deep breaths. Sympathetic fight or flight. So to the example of the bear, you come across the corner, you see a bear, and you're instantly in your sympathetic nervous system of your ANS. You are in fight or flight. Your heart is reacting before anything. You are in the fear emotion. Parasympathetic is being able to control that emotion, and that is what we are trying to do with our heart brain. We need to stop trying to think that, oh, I will be happy when. I will be rich when. I will be satisfied when I get that new relationship, when I get that new job. I'll feel good when I have a million dollars. I'll feel happy when I have that jet ski, when I have that new car, when I have that big screen TV. We keep waiting for something in our outside world to be acquired to then what we think is going to trigger that emotion, that feeling, that heart coherence. And what I'm telling you and what we can see from studies from the heart math centers literally, you can create it through thought alone and through feeling it. It takes practice. Everything takes practice, but you can create that feeling as if you have all of those things that you think that our society teaches us through consumerism and toxic capitalism that we need to make us feel a certain way. And here's the great part about it. Excuse me. When you start walking around with the feeling of having abundance and having love and having gratitude and having joy, all of the sudden the side effect of that is you no longer want at first, you were like, oh, I'm living as if I have a jet ski. And then all of a sudden, you realize, I don't really necessarily need or want that jet ski anymore. I'm feeling as though I have it, and I have that emotion of having it, so I don't need that external product to make me feel that way. And so the side effect of living like this and getting your heart coherence at its optimum level is you just want to give this information and this feeling to others. You want to share you want to love. You want to help others. And so that's the beautiful side effect of heart coherence is once you get this down and practice it, once you have achieved that feeling of love, richness, happiness, gratitude, you no longer are like, okay, now I want these things. By the law of attraction, they'll probably just come to you. You'll find yourself at an auction with a jet ski or someone selling it for cheap or someone who's looking for love or a job who's going to hire you that you weren't really looking for. That's the law of attraction. When you start feeling and walking around with this emotion, those things just start to kind of come into your life and you say, okay, I didn't need it because I already felt like it, but I'll take it. And your real desire, your real goal now is to give this information, to help other people, to share this love and this joy. And that is the power of heart coherence and having a heart brain in your heart. So I hope uh, that helped you guys a little bit. I know we went kind of quick. Um, if you found value from this, leave a subscribe and a comment below. And as always, we're all about being self-empowered.